I think I kind of jinxed you. I, like, Dude, I don't know what I'm doing this week, man. Like, I got a couple deals. Yeah. Like. His fingers love going through that hair. <laughs> <laughs> what is an NFL quarterback room like? So two years ago, I trained Sam Darnold and Josh Allen and Kyle Allen. That was my draft class. I think that this league is filled with opportunities and the guys that, that stay in the league for a long time are the guys that take advantage of those opportunities. I'm just a big believer in repetition. I'm a big team guy and goals never end. I'm just a big, 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 big team guy and goals Once I stepped on that field today, I was good, man. Welcome to the quarterback room. But Christian, first reoccurring guest. Yeah. In really? the CB room. First roomie to come back. Yeah. Yeah, you're the first reoccurring guest and you're not even quarterback. Kyle came up with that term roomie. Once you're on the I'm a roomie. CB room, you're a roomie. Dude, I've been a roomie. Yeah, that that one varies for a while. Oh. Hit. And we actually were roommates, huh? Been yeah. A lot of different We were, we were roommates movies. for a, a year at AM. A year. And then and then when you came back to well, Arizona. I came you back moved. to Arizona, I stayed in your apartment. Yeah. So we were roomies then. And then um, in LA that one summer too. Yeah. You want to. So we were roommates at AM and uh, we had this sign. So we had two townhouses next to each other. And it was like me, Christian, my buddy Jordan Trailer, and um, our buddy Reed in one. And then like a bunch of the DBs in the next house. And it was like our house was the clubhouse, their house was the trap house. <laughs> <laughs> we all agreed on it. So, yeah. so I, didn't, I didn't come up with the term. But, uh, so we made out, I think Summer had a sign made for like on Etsy. It was like said clubhouse and it was like hanging right above the main hallway. And when I transferred, I remember I was leaving and I saw it and I was like, I'm taking this with me. <laughs> so I grabbed it and I took it down with me. And then I go to Houston, he goes, did you take the clubhouse sign down? <laughs> well, we, like Kyle left and also Kyle needed somebody to take over his room because oh, we we're all my paying God. our share yeah. of Don't do this rent. to me. And he puts his like, <laughs> Puts it on on Twitter, like, yo, does anybody want to move into my room? Anybody want to live with Christian Kirk? I had one person answer, Kirk. though. I yeah. had like, one person. What, like, are you kidding me, right? And then he, like, well, he I, leaves. I gave you a chance, though. You did, but, like, some random kid moves in. Oh, dude. And then, like, he takes the sign, and I'm like, did you really? So, like, Probably. I drove all the way down to Houston and, like, got this sign. I was like, don't do that. Like, dude, a big fork in our friendship there. For really? That. Yeah, you guys so, had to make some decisions at that point. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I was what it was going to look like. my way back, to be honest with you. But no, the best part about it was, so I put it on Twitter, and well, I gave you guys. I was like, hey, like, I need to pay my room. First of all, I didn't know how it worked. I like moved out, and our landlord was like my friend's uncle, and I was like, hey, like, I'm transferring to Houston. Like, sorry, I got to break the lease. He goes, yeah, you got to pay for it, dude. I don't know what to tell you. And so I gave them like a month. Yeah, we couldn't find And anybody. you guys couldn't find anybody. I don't know how hard you tried, but you couldn't find anybody. And then I put it on Twitter, and one person answered. And he showed up. He's probably going to be watching this, so hi. Sorry. but What was his name? Shout him out. Um, just, I think it was Deshaun something. But, it was Deshaun. But he used to, like, <laughs> I came back one time, and he would drink, like, he would, like, come in the kitchen and just put, like, a 64-ounce, like, soda, like a Sprite, like, mm -hmm. every day, and just be, like, drinking it all day long. Yeah, it was... There's probably a lot of other ways to there describe it. There was a it, lot of other things. Yeah. <laughs> it was bad. No. Christian didn't Sounds like, like that's a fork in the road. It was, it, was a, it was a little bit of a fork. Anyways, we've known each other <laughs> for a uh, long time. Um, but appreciate you coming in the room yeah. here, man. Thanks, man. Cheers. And I met Cheers you to us. high school, uh, yeah. the opening. I went you guys and went twice to the opening. Mm -hmm. You guys remember going to my brother's house? Dude, we were talking about, that talking about that yesterday. We were literally talking about it yesterday. So, how ironic. Here we are. I know what you're saying. So the story yeah. is telling the cameras. Um, you guys were in high school, right? Yeah. Were we still and in high school? I think I was a sophomore. Yeah. Kyle, yeah you, we was young. you guys were young. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was like a, ask your parents if it's cool to go over yeah, 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 with yeah, yeah, yeah. Coach Jordan. No, dude, I was cool. <laughs> you were chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mike no, was Christian cool. had to ask. Yeah. I had to ask. <laughs> um, and like, go kick it at my brother's house. And I literally, I, I remember saying like, Dude, if you guys X, Y, and Z, if you guys do all your stuff, like this is the lifestyle you guys can have. And here we are, at Christian's house. Dude, the life. best part about it was <laughs> I was talking to Christian. Like, you know how like you were you said that, but it was like a thirty minute spiel on it. Yeah. And we were all in Carson's pool, and we were all just like in the deep end with our heads out of water, <laughs> just, just like <laughs> right here. Flow we should have shot this episode yeah. of the deep end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we were just like sitting there. Me and Christian didn't say a word for thirty minutes. We were just like. 
I was just uh-huh. like, damn, we're really uh-huh. in Carson Palmer's house right now. Yeah. Just walking around. And you probably live like five minutes from where he lived right now. No, it was it was off like 85th Street or yeah, whatever. It's like, it's like right here in PV. Yeah. So, yeah, we and then you end up a Cardinal and, you know. Yeah, we were talking about that yesterday. So, so full circle. Everything's full circle. So crazy. So, um, I'm curious, I haven't talked to you about all this stuff, but you came on the show when I was absent, so you came on with Kyle. It was early, too. It was yeah. like week three or four of the season. Like No, right it, was after, like, it was like week two right or three. we played the Chargers, so it was week three. I think I kind of jinxed yeah. you. Why? No. Oh. I read off your stats, remember? That, oh, yeah. I read right. off your stats. You were on like a tear to start the season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you're like your top he's, five. He's on schedule for... <laughs> Oh, uh, like 17 touchdowns, 1,600 yards. Yeah, yeah. yards. Touchdowns. And you're like, wow, like it feels nice to hear that out loud. And I was like, I definitely shouldn't, shouldn't have said that. that. Oh, yeah, you're like, are you a big stat guy? And I'm like, I try not to look at it. And you're like, well, <laughs> and here just, you go. Yeah, I just threw a ball right in your here, face. Your not stats. even what your stats were. Yeah. Uh, have you heard all the bad stuff that people were saying about you? No. No. Well, listen to this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. oh, um, so came on early in the year, and then you guys went on a little tear. The whole team did. Um, I love hearing different versions when people can turn it around. So, I mean, Jacksonville, when you have the number one pick in the draft, I'm not talking about Trevor, I'm talking about this this year. Mm-hmm. When you draft number one, it's because you're the worst team in the league. And right. I know you weren't a part of the dumpster fire with Urban Meyer and all the stuff that went down, but I, you also heard all the stories, right, that no one else has heard. But I'm just curious, just the turnaround. Like, yeah, you got to have a quarterback, and yeah, the new coach has got to be right and add some key pieces in free agency, but... Mm-hmm. Okay, what were some of the things, if you look back on it and you go, like even this is why start, it happened. You know, like like when you get there, you know, because like we were talking about free agency the whole time. The best part about free agency is like, you don't have a fucking clue where you're going. Like you were like, man, I might go to Buffalo. Like I might go to this place. And then all of a sudden, like you're a Jaguar. Jacksonville. But then you, but you go there and it's, you're going to Jacksonville that was two and 14 in like one of the worst, like, years from a coaching staff perspective like that i've heard of you know yeah. and you go in there like just like start from that point like when you get there like in otas yeah i think <clears throat> so like right when i signed in you know like march 14th free agency deal breaks fly out the next day and like from the second i stepped into the building it just had like a totally different feel that mm. i had been around you yeah, know like, like even from arizona huh? yeah it just like it was like the closest thing to like being a college kid and stepping on campus and everybody's like god we're so happy to have you here like you're like but man you everybody loves me here you know yeah. and then you're like kind of decipher like all right how much is this going to be like all right i'm just here to sign and then it goes a total 360 once we start like getting into meetings and stuff like that you're like whoa you know where, where did everything else go but mm-hmm. from day one like getting in the team meeting and just like the energy that Doug brought and the people that he also put amongst his staff, like everybody was bought in to what he was trying to do. And I Mm -hmm. think that's big for players. I think it takes a little bit, a a little while because, you know, the NFL, it's a melting pot. Like all of us are from different backgrounds. All of us have different personal goals. We have different, come from different walks of life. So yeah, it takes a little bit for everybody everybody to buy into one thing. Um, but Doug was able to do that quick. And so from OTAs, like you could just tell everything was calculated. Everything was strategic. And one thing I I was just talking to Sam about this, like he never changed. Even when we lost five games in a row, nothing changed. Like nothing changed. There was no negatives. There was, we didn't dwell on what we didn't do. We were just always focused on what we can do better and how we can, define and really master our process like that's one thing that our OC press Taylor talks about is like how do we master our process how do we master coming in on Monday watching film correcting what we did and then start on Wednesday you know normal down and distance breaking down everything and just like mastering our process and doing that week in and week out and I think that just kind of like helped accelerate everything and when I look back on it you know once we got over that hump it's like, I mean, we weren't doing anything different that mm-hmm. we had done from week we one to points. Yeah, we were scoring points. Like we started playing better football, but like our process didn't change, you know? Yeah. We just had to buy in, believe in one another. And everybody realized like we have one of the best teams in the league. Yeah, I think like 
whether evaluating a player or looking at organizations or not even football related, just companies that are killing it and, you know, and have weathered the storm and whatever. Everything's kind of behavior based in my opinion. Like I just, I think the best athletes get behind their behaviors, not their talents. Yeah. Right. And Tom Brady's a perfect example. Like who is he, who has he out talented? You know what I mean? Yeah. He's just been out behaving everybody for like 25 years. Yeah. And it's seeing the same thing with organizations, even if, like I've just been around coaches where they're actually not that impressive of a speaker, right? Or they like never played the position or yeah. they, you know what I mean? Like didn't really have, success. but it's that, that process, like, yeah. you know? And uh, I think when you evaluate people, I think that's one of your best things too, right? Is just the way you go about your business, right? We were talking before you you know, switched up your off season training, right? Because the way that it's laid out for the year, the results and the process that it goes through, yeah. So I think people that are seeking to, you know, get, like innovate and get a better process individually, what they're doing, um, but definitely people in a leadership <clears throat> position like a head coach, yeah. you just stay on track. What are some things that, because you've always been a routine guy, you know, way you take care of yourself, all that stuff. What are some things that maybe came up this year where you like added to your game? Like you contributed and made the team better. Like how did you get better this year? Um, I will say... And it's a, a total credit to the staff and just like the being around those guys is honestly like becoming a quarterback in a sense of like knowing like growing my football IQ. Room, no, like the room. Growing my football IQ and like being able to, you know, break down defenses yeah. and like my ability to pre snap, come out of the huddle and know what they were in and like know all right, nickels outside leverage, like they're in four, you know, like being able to do that and know that, all right, I got a slant. So, like, I'm going to take him outside a little bit, you know, try to threaten his leverage, and then I know I have space before the safety is about to break down because he's reading through two. You know, like, little stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then that stuff matters so they do a great too. job, like, putting me in motion. So, like, giving me a tell, like, all right, mm -hmm. you know, if it's corners over and this guy stays, like, it's zone. If it's corners over and this guy follows you, like, straight man, mm -hmm. you know. And so we get into doing some of that stuff. And that that helped me, like, tremendously. So, Pre-snap, I already know what he's doing. Yeah. I know he's a man. You know, I'm not coming off the line. And it's true. Some receivers tell you, like, pre-snap, you have no clue what they're in. Mm -hmm. Kind of come off the ball, you're like, is it man? And, oh, Dude, especially shit. Now, no, it's it's zone, you know, like. It's getting harder. Yeah. It is. It's you know, getting like, a lot some harder. Some of those defenses, like, even L.A., like, the whole first half, we had no clue, like, what they were in. You know, they're showing zero, and then they drop out to Dude. Tampa, too. And it's like, you have a mesh concept of straight man beater on, and mm. everybody's like, you know, like you're, you're just in the wrong call. So I think, you know, for me, that's that's where I grew the most. Okay, what do you so think? Well, real quick. So talking yeah, about that game. So I was in the this. So this is L.A. Chargers playoff game. Crazy comeback. Yeah. So um, that was a weird one to watch. So the head coach of the Chargers kids are on my flag football team. So, you know, I mean, you get to know the families, mm -hmm. you know, a couple coaches. Like, so who are you rooting for? Tough one, right? Because like that was a hot seat situation. That was there was some hot seat yeah. Sean Payton rumors, and like you know what I mean. Like I, yeah. you get to know the family, right? And so it's not like fire the coach. It's like you picture the family, you know, yep. having to re uproot. And so of course. I'm watching that game, but what was crazy? So during draft training, that's draft training, right? January, February. Mm -hmm. So I got a group of guys, and every year they did it too. I get access to film, and then I assign a different defense to each guy. Okay, and so we watched that week. So I teach them how to watch tape like a pro. So Monday, base pressures, Tuesday, sub pressures, Thursday, third down, Friday, red zone. And then mm -hmm. they get on the whiteboard and they present. So one of the quarterbacks, Will Levis from Kentucky, had the Chargers D that week. Mm -hmm. And in three by one, they were playing kind of like, they were playing like six push, it, six push yeah, whatever it you want to call yeah. it. So it's like quarters of the boundary yeah. and he's reading three. Yeah. And so then you guys have that play where on the, on the, te on the like a TV copy, Trevor said 63, 62. I'm assuming that's a protection. Um, check to it and they're like he checks to it and it was you number three on a shallow or some kind of like grab to I hold that down, safety I tied down, yeah. and Zay just take off because most people play quarters with that that safety will help but they were playing cloud to the field yeah and so it was one of those like seeing it so understanding the game I mean obviously Trevor's the one who calls it but being able to see that older receivers Zay yeah. Marvin guys around you in that room I mean well, that's just well, like the perfect call so too. we so perfect we were, we were talking about this last night so we were doing a lot of tempo stuff and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure we were, te no, we, sorry, we broke the huddle and we just had like your normal, like Hank on, like sit over the ball flat with a, a curl. Mm -hmm. 
And so break the huddle, get to the line of sh- scrimmage, and you can like you can just see Trevor and they're in his this headset. Yeah, you break it with enough time. And yeah. all of a sudden he starts changing the protection, and then he, you know that play was called Ali. We called it Ali because we have a divide going down the middle of the field. We had practiced it and hit it earlier earlier in the week when we were practicing it. I was the guy on the divide. Hmm. So he goes, oh. yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> so <man>. he goes, <laughs> he goes, he goes, Ali, Ali. I'm looking at Zay, and Zay's looking at me. And I think for a second where I'm like, sh- I'm like, switch with me, switch oh. with me. I'm like, switch, I'm like, switch, switch. Because I knew it was going to be a touchdown. And Zay's like, what? Like, no. No, no, no. no. We knew, we, I, I knew. Like, I just wanted to make sure Marv got it. And I'm looking at them like, it's Ali, it's Ali. So, like, look bad. Trevor's asking for the ball. So, I just literally ran straight at Derwin. Like, yeah, straight exactly. at Derwin James. Looked him in the eye. And I'm pretty sure I went, like, four yards deeper just to make sure. You were, and yeah, I just sat, run through. I just, like, sat hard. He bit, and then this. I mean, the safety was so far pushed yeah. to the other, the other hash. I mean, it was a it was a walk in, but it, like things like that. That's what I'm saying. Like credit to Trev. Like, and that's our process and like time on task. Everybody in the meeting knowing what everybody else has because, I mean, there's there's not a lot of groups that can literally get to anything at any Dude. time. There's always one guy, you know. And yeah. I'll say it like receivers too. If you check to something and you're not in tune with what the other guy has. You're only focused on what you got. I mean, yeah. you can't. You can't well, get also, yeah, it doesn't help you out in space, and it does, you don't have like a good awareness of where you're at on the field. And, right. Yeah. I just oh. wouldn't add a wideout to the room. Like, so when I work with younger dudes, I just try and push them and go, "Listen, like, don't memorize what you have on this play. You got to understand three things. You got to understand the entire concept, yep. the quarterback's progression, and how coverage <laughs> is going to dictate if it is the quarterback's progression. Yep. Your progression, this play, it's not going to dictate his progression because he's just going one, two, three. If you understand those three things. I think you can run a high four five and and play. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think yeah. you can have pretty solid hands, drop them every now and then and play. Yeah. Or not have a unique, I'm a back shoulder, I'm a over the top, I'm separate. Like you don't actually need any like individual things that you're really talented at. I think if you just are that, there's a spot for you. Yeah. Like, you can be one of these three guys in eleven person. Yeah. The only, I mean? only part I get in trouble like knowing the progression is and like knowing the coverage too. I'm just like Oh, it's you it's know you're not four. It's not coming to me, or like it's yeah. covered too. I'm not, and then it ends up coming to me. I'm like, like yeah. you you kind of run like, not as if you were to know you're getting yeah. the ball. But it's so. the same thing from quarterback though. Like if you if you have like a play, and you know like all right, it's oh it's covered too. Like first and second read aren't going to be open here. Like oh, let me skip through them. Yeah. You throw an incompletion, and then you get to the film room on Monday, and you're like. He's like, hey, that's number one. Why the fuck didn't you throw it to him? He's yeah. wide open, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. done that so many times. It's like yeah. you get so used to the concept where you're just kind of like, oh, I've thrown that flat a million times in my first read. Like, it's probably not going to be there this time. There. Like, yeah. they'll cover it one of these times, and you skip through it. And you always like, give, like, the defense too much credit. Way too much. We'll always give them too much that's credit. It's hard not to, though. It's yeah. like. No, it, uh, 100%, but you just, like, you assume that they know. That's what like what's saying, coming? Yeah. You, like you just assume like, oh, they gotta know this is coming in. Yeah, that like, yeah. especially when I was playing with McCaffrey, I was like, all I would do is just throw him flat routes, swing routes, option routes, and I'm like, first and second down, one by three. I'm like, they gotta know I'm throwing it to him. Mm-hmm. So like sometimes I'd be like, man, I'm gonna throw a stick this way. And yeah, he just crosses him up. Yeah. Should be a forty yard touchdown, you know? Yeah. So crazy turnaround, and then obviously big goals. What do you think? So you guys had the turnaround last year, but now it's like, all right, we've got to taste the playoffs. Let's go, let's go more into the turnaround, though. I want to, I want to talk about, like, because we played you guys early in the season, all right? Mm-hmm. And we won, like, one of the grossest football games of all time. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. 13 to 6. I think you guys had, like, 400 total yards and six points. Trevor threw, like, a tough pick on the one-yard line. And you talk about process, and it's, like, it's easy to talk about it now, because you guys came out the other side, you know, like the process worked. But I'm sure there it had to be guys in the building who were there last year and went through the shit or two years ago, went through the shit. And then this year, like you're losing a bunch of games in a row and then you lose to us and we sucked. Like we were horrible. Like we were just, that was our first win of the year, you know? And that was game five. Like was everyone still bought in at that point? It was tough. That was, I would probably say that was the, beginning of it was the beginning of the tough stress but I think it was the beginning of some of that doubt starting to slip in like okay you know because we did have two big wins we you know maybe the Chargers early in the air we crushed the the Chargers Chargers. yeah crushed the Colts we're like oh it's like shit we're good we lost a close one to Washington 
And I mean, not that they were first game world beaters, too, right? but yeah, it was yeah. our first game. So we're like, all right, like we got a good team. And then that happened. And I was like, whoa, you know, like, all right, we got, we got some issues. Yeah. And then you can kind of see that doubt and it's natural, you know, especially the people that were there, the guys that were there, it's like, here we go again. And you know, there's people around the building that have been there like, for oh, a man, long it's time, just, it's, this show it's just Jacksonville, yeah. you know, it's just Jacksonville, you, there? Yeah. Yeah. you know, and I'm just like, no, like we, we didn't come here to do all that. And then it's just hard because we went on that five game skid and you start literally asking yourself, like, are we, are we ever going to win a game? You know, because it's like, we're putting in all this work. We're doing everything right. We're trying to master our process. And they're like, just keep chipping away, keep chipping away, keep chipping away. And we keep losing, we keep losing, we keep losing. It's like, damn, like, are we ever going to get one? Like, what, it, well, yeah. what is it going to take? And so <laughs> it, was, it was not easy by any means. And I think, you know, it's, I'd be lying if I didn't say like all of us had some doubt and kind of sitting there at times like it might be another long year and you know and it's also easy to be like you hit the bye week you're three and seven we just lost to Kansas City and it's easy to be like all right you know let's just let's have you know put together a a good seven last game you know or last end of the uh, of the season like let's just get ready for next year let's start building for next year you know we got some more pieces coming next year like everybody started already saying next year next year next year and that was the decision we had to make coming off the bio was like do you want to start getting ready for next year or can we make this the season that yeah. we want to make it and we were able to make that turn but it was, it's funny we all laugh about it but doug literally in the locker room after we lost to kansas city right before the bye week he's like i'm telling you guys right now it's going to come down to week 18 where we're going to play for for the division or Crazy. not the division for yeah the division yeah, the division. yeah for the division and we're all sitting there like oh yeah oh, oh all right yeah, yeah. Like, no, cool right, like uh, rad, i'm about i'm about to go to yeah i'm about to go to the bahamas <laughs> like whatever <laughs> yeah we're like okay yeah cool and then he's like i'm telling you guys he's like we just gotta win all of them we just gotta win all of them so we come out beat Baltimore in a crazy game. Like, crazy okay, game. Cool. You know, like we got that one. was like the catalyst. Yeah. Though, huh? It was like we got one. But this is the thing. We go to Detroit the next week and lose 41 to 17. Oh my God, I forgot about that. Get smoked. And I'm like, next year. Yeah. We're all like next year. Like yeah. next year's gonna yeah. be cool. Like, all right, let's just get ready for next year. Like I thought we had it. I thought we were a playoff team, but we are definitely not even close. Yeah. And then the back half of the season was the back half of the season. I mean, we put together one of the craziest runs. I think we went what seven and zero to end the, you guys end the year killed and it. lost lost in Kansas City. And it was it was Trevor too, you know. Yeah. Like this is the sport is run by quarterbacks. Like, and Trevor, just looking at his stats, it was like week to week to week to week. And you look up and he was like second in the NFL in total QBR over those weeks. He had like sixteen touchdowns, like one pick. He was killing it, and he was like from the outside perspective, like it looked like he just made a decision and said like this isn't the way it's going to be like i'm a fucking baller like i need to step up and play better for the team and whatever he did mentally like you can probably talk way better about it but it seemed like he was what switched the team yeah. like his play his attitude i don't know what it was but he changed the whole vibe he's just one of the most consistent guys like talk to somebody who used to play with him in high school and have him describe trevor it's going to sound exactly like what a clemson guy would say and it's going to sound exactly like what a jaguar would say They'll be like gets yeah, the same like nothing's changed I think the other thing too is I always felt, and you know, I hope Trevor during the draft prep was like, this guy's going to be a better pro than he was in college. I don't really care how good he was in college. I understand he was, you know, whatever it was like sixty or whatever, thirty something in two, Never or, lost you know, what I mean, Saturday. never really lost all that stuff. And he was a great college player. But what they asked the quarterbacks to do, because I worked with Deshaun coming out of there too, what they asked quarterbacks to do, or what they equipped quarterbacks with offensively at Clemson, was really limited. It was a lot of mirrored concepts. It was a lot of like one high, two high. And so I just felt like if you give, that's why I said Deshaun's going to be a better player in the league. Trevor's going to be a better player in the league, even though they were awesome, because they're the type of player, you can give them way more responsibility. You can give them way more access to get in and out of things, way more comprehensive approach to protections and concepts and all that stuff. And then if you give them smart wideouts, right? Because the other thing at Clemson is like, in, or in college in general, they don't give a lot of responsibility to the receivers. You know, it's like, if it's cover two, release otherwise run your route that's kind of it so give them smart wide outs pass catchers as a whole and give them more responsibility 
he's going to end up being way better. It's literally just a matter of time and consistency. Um, where do you see him at right now? I mean, from that turnaround and what that did for him, like where's, where's he go from here? Yeah, well, I think you kind of hit it on the head. I think right when they started giving him more responsibility, but also giving him more freedom, he just kind of took off. And freedom within the offense, freedom within to be out there, see things, check to things. And, you know, that's what started really kind of opening up. And that's where I thought he was at his best. And, you know, it was a lot because of the, some of the games that we were in. You know, we had to go, you know, no huddle, up tempo. So, you Which know, we're getting on the ball. Though, man. He's seeing it. He's checking the things. And I'm like, dude, that's when you're at your best. Like, when he's seeing it and he's checking the things, like, it's, it's lights out. And it, it always worked. Like, anything he got to, always worked. Man yeah. beaters, zone beaters. Like, once he kind of, they kind of gave him the reins to be like, all right, you can get to anything at any time. We're working during practice, during periods where we're not even, you know, out there supposed to be doing anything. You know, he's bringing me, Marv, Zay, Evan, down to the end zone. Like, we're going through signals. We're going through everything. And so that really helped. And, you know, I'm thinking back, like, also during the Detroit game, he had that scare where it looked like his knee, like, was blown out. Yeah. Like, dude came, sacked him. And oh he met, God, that's when he messed right. up his toe. But yeah. when he got tackled, like, when they showed on the dumb, Jumbotron, I was like, done like yeah. you're I, definitely I mean, planning your vacation then oh my gosh it was terrible yeah. but then so they take him inside and come out come in at halftime this is right before halftime coming at halftime like don't see him i'm like damn like, fuck. Trevor's done da, yeah. da, da. next thing i know he's back out there for the first series i'm like are you good he's like i'm just keep going I, like they said he's everything's okay shit, yeah he's like they said everything's okay like just fight through it and like that says a lot you know mm -hmm. and we at that time we were still losing 35 to 10, like there's no reason. He very easily could have been like, all right, let's just shut it down, get through this. Like mm -hmm. he went back out there. And so everybody else sees that, you know, mm -hmm. everybody else sees that. And for weeks, I mean, he fought through that toe injury and anything else that happened. So still fighting through it, huh? Yeah. But I think his, his, his next step is just going to be taking more response, even more responsibility that he already had, yeah. you know, like, and the coaches truly trusting in him and anything that I can do. And I think communication is also a big thing. As a young player, I was the same way. I'm sure we all felt it. Your first and second year, you're not, you're not complaining about anything. You're not saying anything. You're yeah. just like, I'm showing up. I'm doing my job and that's yeah, it. You know? I'm a young you. kid. Yeah. yeah, like I'm telling him and, you know, I know he really like realizes it, that, okay, like you, you have the most ultimate voice on this team. If you don't like something, tell them, you yeah. know, like, if you don't feel comfortable with the play call, tell them. If you don't like someone with the protection that week, tell them. You know, mm -hmm. like, you had that voice, they listen with us, you know. So I think, you know, him just keep growing in that aspect, yeah. I think this is his next step. There's also like, a, he's, this is like favorable for him too. And during the draft process, I had said this, um, where I think being the face of college football, like he was for really two year, two full years, yeah. because he won a national title as a true freshman. So then that whole off season, you know, the promos for upcoming season, you know, the game coming up, the all the magazines, all that stuff. So for two full years, he was like the face of college football. I think that is bigger than being the face of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Because when you think about, and I went from Jack, playing in Jacksonville to playing in Chicago. So I had a night and day, just how big of a difference there is between a Jacksonville market and a Chicago market, which is actually the biggest market in football because New York and LA split with two teams. Yeah. So Chicago's act technically the biggest market. So it was like a, whoa, this is crazy. That, this is really big, but that was also really small. So I think one of the benefits is that as he continues to have success, you guys win a Super Bowl next year. He's not going to deal with some of the fame issues that I talk to other guys about yeah. dealing with fame and dealing with expectations when it's national and when they're really famous. I don't think no matter how much success he has there, he's going to ever get that famous, which is a huge advantage. Yeah. He's been the guy since he was what? Like, Used to it. I mean, the forever, Adidas campaign you know? was number one since day one, and yeah. it was like as good of a tagline as you're going to yeah. get. 
I will say he, he's arguably one of the most recognizable people I've ever well, been yeah, around. Oh, yeah, because of his fucking Everywhere hair, we go, big like, face. there's always somebody. He's so tall, too. So tall. Tall as yeah. shit. He's so got tall. super unique hair. He's got a unique look, <laughs> and, and he never wears like, a hat or a hoodie. Always he, he wears a hoodie. Yeah, we always, like, we yeah. always give, him, give him a hard time. For he hasn't thrown night, a ball without like, doing this. Yeah, like, talks like, he's like, like oh, for like, 10 dude, I don't know what I'm doing this week, man. Like, I got a couple deals. His fingers love going through that hair. It's beautiful, man. Can't blame the kid. Dude, there's like, go back to... um. I'm talking about like the no huddle stuff. I feel we were talking to Kurt Warner about it. About, um, this is season two, but last episode we filmed was with Kurt Warner. We were talking to him about in his Super Bowl against the Steelers, right? And you were obviously a Cardinals fan, so you watched it. He was trying to get Ken Wisenhut the whole time, their OC at the time. He was like, we need to just spread them out, like go no huddle, like throw it around. They're in this 3 4 defense. They got a bunch of big backers. They can't cover us. And, wasn't hunting the first half, didn't want to do it. He like wanted to stay in the huddle and you know, get in 21 personnel, whatever. And then they get down 17 to seven after he throws that pick six. And he was like, it was interesting he said it because he was like, I think that pick six was probably the best thing that happened to us during that game because we had to go no huddle now. And he was just slinging it and he spread them out. But there's something about like getting in a rhythm in a quarterback's eyes of, of being in no huddle, like getting on the ball, kind of getting them in simple shit and just letting them deal. Like, you get in a rhythm so quick and so fast. And it's like, it's weird to me that more teams don't do that, you know? That they don't just go straight into no huddle. It's like ego of the it. coach wanting to do what we talked about all week, what we think's gonna work, right. instead of like, take it the reins, you know what I mean, yeah. and go. My brother fought with that, with BA. It, it, when he was in Arizona, it was the same thing. It was like, does the court, sometimes the coordinator just, no, they just wanna call it, even yeah. though the best thing is just like, let the guy who's out there, who sees what he sees, keep things really simple and get the ball out of his hand. It takes, it takes thinking out of it. Yeah, you, know, like you just react. Football is played at its best when it's, you're just reacting. You're just reacting, you're just playing. So I think for, especially for quarterbacks, it, like you said, you keep everything simple. And a lot of the stuff that you're doing, doing are concepts and things that you've been training since OTAs, you know, yeah. it's the most repped or a concept concerts. you've been running since high school seven on seven. Exactly. Yeah. Like you, you've seen every look that you could get to cover this concept and you know where to go with the ball, yeah. you know, but if you have a game plan play where it has to be this uh, look yeah, and they've been thinking about it, we all don't know if, the, or if, the, if it looks like it could possibly be middle field close, we're going to kill it to a run. Like we're going to get ourselves out of it. And it's like, you're second guessing, like, is it that? I don't know if it's that, you know, and then just too much thinking being involved instead of just like, all right, let's get on the ball, let's go, let's just let's just react. And well, so, it's also like you you're in training camp, right? And you've just you're putting through your base install. This is always my like like the funniest thing to look back on at the end of the season is like you go through your base install, you're running all these plays for like six weeks during training camp, like over and over until you're like, Can we not run this play anymore? Please. Yeah. We ran this play many times. And then you get to week one. And you game plan, and none of the base plays are in the game plan. Yeah, yeah. It's all shit that's just like dialed up for the week yeah. that like no one's used to. They're like, oh, they're gonna run this coverage. We're gonna hit this here, here, here. And then you go through the season, and you get all these reps in training camp of all these concepts, and you run them like a couple times. Yeah, I just never understood it. I think that's what we struggle with the most, uh, especially you know, like in, in Arizona. I, like when we would go up tempo, because that's that's a no huddle offense. You know, everything's everything is signal based. We never got in a huddle. So when we would just get on the ball and just go and do all of our simple stuff, I mean, we were a totally different offense. You know, but like you you look at and it got to the point where you know guys were saying like, hey, like we need our base stuff in the game plan. So then you finally see it like every game plan. It was like we always had our base stuff up, but. You know, before that, it was just a lot of just install plays, like right. all install plays in the game plan. It's like, let's get to the stuff that we've been running and we're, we know we're good at. Exactly. You know? we get know you back in a rhythm. Yeah. yeah. It's like a good verse all. Yeah. So you bring up Arizona. I'm always curious. I haven't really talked to you about going from Arizona. You were the two receiver there the whole time, right? You were, your first. Arguably three. Okay. I didn't want to say it, but you <laughs> I think it was more than. But yeah, but you get there, right? And you're and you're at Z too, right? You're yeah. playing outside receiver to the field, which is not your best spot, right? Larry's at F. You're not going to take Larry out of F. That's great, right? So he's there, your first couple years, right? And then Hop gets there, and it was Hop, Larry, and you at one point too, right? And then AJ Green too. But you're finally like you're kind of the two. You're the three. 
You said you're the three. I didn't say it. And then you you finally get a chance to play F that last year, right? Yeah. Or were you still moving around? I was still moving around a little bit, but my role kind of expanded. Like my last year when Hop got hurt, yeah, it yeah. was just me and AJ. And you ball like yeah. That's what it's so you go from being the two, you're kind of the one, but you had the most yards, you had the most production. You didn't get a thousand. Yeah. That, by what? That, Seventeen that yards. Or yeah, something? that one hurt so bad. That's bad. And I you, should, got, I what, you get like three targets that game. Yeah, I, I should be saying like back to back, but it's all right. I'm not. I'm not petty. About it's it. all right though. You yeah, should paid. But, <laughs> but then you go. Become the most overpaid. You go to Jacksonville, and you're the one. Well, you got you got some dogs around you. you like, if, if it never felt like you guys had like a real deal, like one, you obviously had the most targets and the most yards and all that. Yeah. How much different was it being the one, being the guy? But you've you've always been that like, your whole life. But now you're in the NFL. Yeah. And you're the one as opposed to being the two with a bunch of vets and that. Right? Yeah. It was for me. It was it was good for my confidence because um, mm-hmm. I also feel like. When you're a three in the NFL, you could have one target, you could have you zero mean, yeah. targets, you could have you get the game six, plan. a sneaky <laughs> six. Like, yeah, you're looking at the game plan, you're like, oh, it's going like, to be a little thin for me. That's this, not for me. Yeah, that's not for me. Little, that's not for me. You know, oh, like, I'm not in in 12 personnel this out. week. Exactly, yeah. yeah you're, you're, you're not in in 12 personnel. Yeah. And thankfully, like, as time went on there, like, I kind of worked my way into that. And when I, like you said, when I first got there, they kind of just stuck me outside, which really helped my game because I learned how to play outside receiver. Like my rookie year, like especially we had some guys go down, like they stuck me out of X and I was like the backside X at three by one, like learning how to do that and just like trying to go in. And that was never my game, never had been my game. And so, but it helped me, it challenged me. I knew I wasn't the best at it, but I worked at it and, you know, just kept kind of progressing throughout my years. But coming to Jacksonville and it helped my confidence in a sense where like, I know I'm going to be heavily involved in us winning games. And, you know, especially when it matters, like they're going to lean on me. And that's when I play my best is, you know, like I, I feel like I play my best when it's a high level competition, you know, it's big games and they're like, CK, like we need you to go win. We need you to, to, to do something to help us go win. And it's like, all right, you know, I, that's, I don't know for me, that's when I thrive. But when I go in there and I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna see three catches, three passes today or four. It's kind of you're, you're just kind of out there, you know. Call my number, coach. Call my number, one three. Always, baby. always been that way. You really have though, and it's like, it's kind of in your life though too. It's like, you always like, it's kind of a weird analogy, but when I think about you on the field, it's like, you like you like the lights, you like the the pressure, you like putting the team on your back. Yeah. But you're kind of like that way in life too. Like you like you're like a, the support system for everyone. Like you support. Hey, thanks, man. You, you put your friends on your back. Not much me. I don't need your support, <laughs> but it's all good. Uh, but like your parents, like your family, like your friends, like you're always there. I mean, I guess you do support me. I stayed at like your, all, all your apartments. Yeah. <laughs> I'm staying yeah, at your yeah. house right it's, now. Stay, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. my God. Uh, you stay at my house for a week. Oh, dude, it was so funny. When you said about stay at your apartment uh, in draft training, I just remember like I was in there sleeping and like I can be a mess sometimes, dude. And I remember that bathroom; I just had, like shit everywhere. Oh my god! And Summer had me using this like charcoal toothpaste at the time too. So like, this like you had white zinc, and the sink was just fucking black <laughs> everywhere. And you came home from like going out, and like I think it was you and some buddies, and like some of the, like a girl came home with like one of your buddies or something, and she went to go use the bathroom. Yeah. And she was like. Who's staying here? It's fucking disgusting in here. And I just like I woke up because you guys got home, and I was like, God damn it! <laughs> so embarrassed. But yeah, I mean, I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, that's you have always supported. Kind of had nothing to do with anything, actually. <laughs> I just remember that story. The, this is me being supportive. It's paternal is a way to do it. Like, yeah, 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 me being supportive for yeah. uh, for Kyle and but his yeah. charcoal toothpaste. But yeah. no, nah, I mean, like it. It just was one of those things where. Like, I had been in that position my whole entire life. And, you know, especially, like, going into this year, I love, like, when people say I can't do something or, you know, anybody for that sense. Like, never that I need any added motivation because I'm a very motivated person within myself. But it's helpful. Um, But it, it, and all it takes is one little spark to light and then it's, you know, it's on. I know that spark, too. It was the guy from Twitter. Guy from Twitter. You tweeted back at that guy recently. Oh yeah. That, See, that, like is I that already, your spark for the off season? 
Oh, it's uh, it's already there. It's there. Okay, yeah, cool. it's it's already it's already there. Like I don't know. It's just and even you know even getting that close and going all the way to the divisional round. Like only thing I can think about is like we got to get there next year. Yeah. And being uh, there's nothing more that I wanted was to come home and play in a Super Bowl in AZ. God, like that was how, the only thing oh, I thought about. Yeah. That was the only thing I thought about. Like man. I wanted it so bad for us. Kind of close, man. We're it's so really close. close, and so I know everybody feels that way though. Like, yeah. I truly feel that like sense of urgency, like we gotta, like we gotta do it, we yeah. gotta do it, you know. And I know everybody's like excited to to get back to yeah. work. All right. So lastly, here, think about now you've got a taste of the playoffs, win in the playoffs, right? Like how? Because most fans don't realize, like they just they look at it and like that team went to the playoffs or they go to the playoffs every year, they lose in the first round. It's like no, 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 no. no. Once you're a part of a team that goes to the playoffs and you feel the, like that week of work, that Monday of a playoff game is just totally different than any other Monday, right? Yeah. The energy level, the equipment dudes, every, the whole thing, the people parking car, everything is just like, we got a shot here, right? It's, it, it's a tournament, right? It's a single elimination tournament. And so like, how does that change you guys moving forward? Cause you got a taste of it, but everybody in the room got a taste of it too. Like, you didn't have that before. Going into this season, there were very few guys on your team who'd been to the playoffs, right? And then you got a coach who's won a Super Bowl. Like, how does that change moving forward? And, like, where do you guys go from here? Yeah, I think, well, the cool thing about the whole process and the whole, uh, ex you know, experiencing the playoffs and getting a win and whatnot, like you said, the, the energy, the whole city of Jacksonville just, like, totally just came together and, like, came behind us and... Right. Like, instead of people, like, coming up to you and saying, like, hey, man, I'm a big fan, like, da-da-da, it was, like, thank you for what you're doing for Jacksonville. And, like, that was really cool, you know? And they're, like, you've done so much for the city and you've done so much for this team. Like, thank you so much for everything you're doing. Thank you for coming here. Like, that feels, that feels really cool. And you go from, you walk into a grocery store, you see nobody in, to, in Jags gear, and now you see everybody walk around. Like, people are proud awesome. to be Jags fans now, where in the past people were embarrassed to wear – their jag stuff out you know and so you kind of change that narrative you're flipping that narrative people are behind it people are like you know excited and they like the people that we have on the team they like what we stand for they like how we fight you know and so I think that's really cool but for us it's just you know now <clears throat> we're probably you know going to be in the conversation for being off-season champions you know there's always the off-season champions and so honestly blocking that out and being like now nah, we're good on that, you know, let's keep the underdog mentality because as soon as you get success in all facets of life, there's always going to be the person waiting for you to not live up to that and be like, I told you so, you know, so we can't let, we can't let that get to us. Yeah. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. But you can't, you can't, like, we can't let that as a team, we can't let any of that get to us. We can't hang our hats off of last season. Like last season happened. It was cool. It was great. Whatever. But, you know, once we step in the building, we get back to work. Like, this is a whole clean slate. You don't think all 31 other teams are thinking the same thing, totally. you know? Totally. So, I think we can do it. How do we want to wrap it? Um, I think we're good. You need to wrap it? All right, I'm going to tell one more story, actually. I just thought of this before we wrap this. Um, uh, after we beat them the first time, my best friend for a long time, Christian, uh, you know, a little jersey swap. We're gonna do a little jersey swap after the game. We we beat the <laughs> we beat them. I'm like I'm sitting around the field, right? I talked to him pre-game. Talked to Trevor a little bit pre-game. Yeah, this is like horrible. This is actually makes up for what I did a little bit back in the day. So I'm like looking around. You know, you're like trying to find people. Like the teams come up. It's hard to find people. Sometimes it takes a little while. I did like five laps around the whole center of the field. Couldn't find Christian. Couldn't find Trevor. I was like. Oh, and it must be like doing interviews or something, whatever. Motherfucker was so mad that they lost the game that he just immediately left the field and went in the locker room. I think I was the first person. In the didn't even room. say anything to me. Didn't say hi. Like literally. I, I, ran, I ran straight into the locker room, grabbed my phone, texted Kyle, and said, "I'm sorry, bro. I'm so pissed right now. <laughs> I'll send you. I like like I'll just have I'll, like I'll send my jersey over." I felt like such an idiot. I was like, Christian. <laughs> 
Christian! Do you know where 13 is? <laughs> you don't know where 13 is? Oh, I'm sorry I did that to you, bro. No, it's all good, man. I, I made up for it well, in the second go around. Yeah, because you destroyed us. I, I thought about walking off the field after that game. We lost like 34 to 3. I was like, I'm yeah. going to hang it up. Dude. Sorry. But no, appreciate you, dude. Um, dude, I just love, I love watching this. Like, you know what I mean? It's been around you guys when you guys were little and dreaming big. Everybody wants to go to the league. Everybody can talk about it. And then, to be honest, everybody works really hard. All these kids throw a ton and run a ton. You guys are actually doing it, creating things for yourself, changing people's lives around you and stuff. I don't want to make it cheesy, but just like it is like literally it's a, for me, it's in my role in, in life. It's just like addicting to like watch people actually do the stuff that they set out to do. But then when you see brothers do it, literally like it's figurative brothers or in my case, literal brothers do it. You know what I mean? It's just the coolest thing. So I think it's one of the dopest relationships we're at your expensive ass house in your hometown where you always wanted it. You know what I mean? Doing stuff like. <laughs> no, so I'm just, so I'm just saying, like it all kind of happened. It's happening, and you guys are not at the end of your careers. You guys like have a bunch of way bigger, cool shit ahead of you. So I think it's amazing. Appreciate you. Thanks, man. There. Appreciate that. Broomy. Thank you. The Recurring Roomy. guest. We're gonna start. We'll have you That's on, nice. and we'll, you'll be like a co-host next time. Let's go. Let's I'm tired. Go. Of I kind of want that. Right? I'm tired of interviewing you. I wanna. I want yeah. you to. I want your takes on. Well, other he's things. tired of being the number three. He wants to be the number one. So. Oh, I'm the number three here, right now on this. You are, yeah. I'm the number we'll three. Get you a little co-host actually you know next time. That. I am. I'm gonna prep. We, Maybe didn't, we'll... we didn't prep for this, so. No. Unfortunately. <laughs> wow. Not it's because we just know each other so well. Very good. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> well, it was supposed to be Trevor, and then I woke up this morning after being up till 3 a.m. and I was like, "Okay, what are we gonna talk to Christian about?" I was like, I jumped in the hot tub immediately when I woke up, and I was in there. I was like, "Think." Um, <laughs> Topics for a Christian. <laughs> and I was like, oh, bacon sounds good right now, man. <laughs> but no, man, appreciate you. All right, guys, that's a wrap from The Room, presented by me in my crib. Off-season vibes. Uh, make sure you guys go check out the YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, follow for more content to come. And thank you for your time.